So if you've seen my old BSPWM videos, you've probably seen my old BSP hide and BSP unhide scripts. And today I'm going to show you my new method for fixing up full screen within BSPWM. So I'll explain what that means in just a moment, but if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So what do I mean by fixing up full screen within BSPWM? Because if you use it right now, you might not even notice a problem. So Let's just do a bit of an example. So you've got this bottom layer, which is all your regular windows, which aren't full screen. Then you've got this top layer, which is your full screen window. So if this top layer is opaque, you're not going to notice any problem. But what happens if you make this top layer a bit transparent? So if it's transparent, you can see through it. And what happens if you can see through it? You can actually see every single window that's down here. Now, why is this a problem? If you don't really care about it, it's probably not a problem to you, but I came from using i3, and in i3, it'll actually hide all of your windows that are behind the transparent window by default. And this is just my preferred behavior. Now, obviously, is this a bit of bloat? Yes. Is transparency bloat in general? Yes. Do I think it looks good? Yes, and that's why I'm doing this. So if you don't care about that problem at all, then don't even worry about it. But as I was saying, I came from i3, and in i3 it does this by default. So I wanted to replicate this behavior from i3 in BSPWM, and the way I decided to do this was through BSP subscribe. So my old method of doing full screening was using two scripts. So I had my BSP hide script and my BSP unhide script. And the problem with this is they worked fine most of the time, but there were a few occasions when they didn't work. And one of those occasions was when I made a window full screen without using my script. So if you don't run the script, obviously nothing's going to happen. So if I full screened a MPV window using the key in MPV or I full screened a video in Brave, obviously you won't be able to see the windows behind it, but your poly bar is actually treated as a window. So what was happening was my poly bar was actually appearing on top of MPV sometimes or on top of a YouTube video, or on top of anything else in Brave. And obviously that's going to be very distracting. So even if for nothing else, you might want to run this just for that. So if you do want to do that, then you might want to strip out all the rest of the stuff. But even if it's just for that, you might want to run this. Now, the other problem I had was this was more of a problem with me just not programming it properly. So in Polybar, if you only run one instance of it, it's only going to appear on one desktop. So I've got it on my main desktop because I don't really look up on my second desktop to see my Polybar. So if I made a window full screen on my second monitor, it was actually hiding my Polybar on my first monitor. And this was happening because I wasn't checking which monitor I was actually making a window full screen on. But that's actually very, very easy to do when you're using BSPC subscribe. So let's just jump right into it now that I've kind of explained everything that's happening. Actually, before we have a look at the script itself, let's just have a look at the behavior of BSPWM with and without the script so you can see if you actually care about it. So if we just open up Brave and we open up a terminal. So right now I'm not actually running an instance of clean full screen. So if I make this full screen, what you'll see is you can actually see the Brave window directly behind my terminal. Now, if you like this behavior, maybe you don't care about this, but something else I'm not a big fan of is if I make a, let's say, bring up LF here, I make this full screen. So we have a full screen window on my second desktop already. Now, if I grab this terminal here and I stick it on my second desktop, what do you think is going to happen? Now, what's actually going to happen is it's going to layer my full screen window on top of my other full screen window. It didn't actually do it even the way that I intended it to. This should have been behind the other window, so I'm not sure what happened there. But as we saw, you had a full screen window on top of a full screen window. And I'm not really a fan of that, especially if one of them has transparency. You kind of then lose your transparency if you're layering two on top of each other. So what about with my script then? So if I open up a new terminal and we run clean full screen and full screen, and we fork that into the background. Now, if I make this full screen, what we'll notice is that it actually hides everything behind my terminal. So it hides the poly bar and it also hides the brave windows. So all I can see now is the wallpaper behind my terminal. And personally, I think this looks much better. Now, you notice that it was a little slow and that's kind of just because of the recording. But if you are on a slower computer, obviously this isn't gonna be the most efficient thing to run, but on most systems, it's not going to be a problem whatsoever. It's just because my computer kind of dies when I'm recording. Anyway, let's just have a look. And as you can notice, when I went out of full screen, it brought everything back. So let's just have a look at how this script actually works. Okay, so there's a couple of different functions in here, but let's just go through them. Now, the first one, the first couple actually aren't really too impressive. So we've got the hide bar. This will just check if my poly bar is running. 
and then basically if it is then it will hide it the other one is show bar so if you use polybar dash message and then command then there's a couple of different commands you can use i'm using hide and i'm using show for this there might be some other ways to do it but this i found is just the easiest way to do it and i'm just p graphing it to make sure that the polybar is actually running now for the hide and show nodes, these are also pretty easy. I'm using BSPC query dash capital N dash N. So this will do a query on the nodes and dash N means do a node selection. So I'm selecting all of the tiled nodes. So one other thing I should mention is that right now this only works with tiled nodes. I haven't got it working with floating nodes because the problem with floating nodes, or actually it's the problem with BSPWM in general, it treats tiled and floating as a part of the same category. So I would have to save somewhere which nodes are tiled and which nodes are floating. So right now it kind of just breaks with floating nodes, but I don't actually use floating nodes on my system. So it's not really a big deal. Anyway, let's get back to this. And then we're doing a desktop query for the current desktop. And then basically we're just looping through the nodes and setting every single node that we found to hidden. And then show nodes is just doing the opposite. So it's looping through all of the nodes that are hidden and then just making them not hidden. So what events are we actually using or what subscriptions are we actually using? So the first one is for node state. So node state is when a node changes between full screen, tiled, floating, between those different things. And we're basically getting the ID details out of the event and just keeping them in variables. So it's a bit easier to read what's going on. Obviously I could just awk them when I need them, but it is much needed to do it like this and I can actually see what's happening in my code base. So next up, we're actually checking for the full screen. Now I know I can combine this if statement into one line. I have no idea why I wrote it like this. I'll fix that off camera. Anyway, what we're doing is we're checking if the window that we're making full screen is on the primary monitor. So that is my main monitor right here. So if the window is on my second monitor, I don't wanna to try to hide the bar. So that's basically what this if check is doing here. And then what we're doing is just hiding all the nodes. So we're hiding all the nodes on the current desktop. And then if it's not full screen, so if I've just taken a window out of full screen mode, what it's gonna do is show the nodes on the current desktop, only the current desktop, because I might have a full screen window on another desktop, and then it will show the bar. Now, next up, we've got node remove. So I didn't actually show that behavior before. So if I make this window full screen here, and then I quit out of it, what it's gonna do is actually reshow the nodes like it should be doing. So as we can see, now I don't have to worry about removing a node from full screen mode and then quitting from it. I can just quit from it and it'll reshow everything I need at the show. Now, next up, we've got node remove. And what this basically does is if I remove a node, it'll make sure that if that node was full screen, everything that was getting hidden behind it is now getting shown. So if I make this node here full screen and instead of going out of full screen mode, I just quit out of it. As we can see, everything gets reshown. So I don't have to worry about making sure that I quit out of full screen mode and then quit the window. I can just quit whenever I want and everything will get reshown properly. So node transfer is basically when you move a node from one desktop to another desktop. So this would be say, if I take this window here and I move it over to my second desktop. So that's basically what that does. Now what I want to happen is when I full screen a node, so let's full screen this one here and I move it to a desktop that already has nodes. So what I want to happen is the nodes on the second desktop to get hidden when I move this full screen node onto their desktop. So as we can see, that basically does this now. Now, occasionally I do see some weird behavior happen where if I have an existing full screen node on this desktop and I move a full screen node to that desktop, it, it doesn't hide the first full screen node. So I don't know, yeah, there we go. Now we can see that behavior. I'm not really sure what's causing that, but I can, easily fix that because it's not happening every single time. It only happens occasionally, but it shouldn't be too difficult to fix. And this last loop in here is something I added in very recently. So what it basically does is hides and shows the bar if there is a full screen node on that desktop. So what do I mean by this and why does it really matter? So if we make this full screen here, as we can see, the poly bar gets hidden, but if we go back to the first desktop, as we can see, the polybar now gets re-shown. So because the first desktop doesn't have a full screen window, I want to see the bar. The second desktop does have a full screen window, so I don't want to see the bar. So what this is basically doing is it's doing a BSPC node query, and it's filtering on full screen nodes. It's checking on the current desktop, and it's checking if the monitor is the primary monitor. So I, so I don't want this if statement to be true if it's on my second monitor, because I don't have a polybar on my second monitor. I only want it to happen on my primary monitor. 
So something cool just to mention is if you haven't done much shell scripting, you might have noticed that I've got this ampersand at the end of each of these lines. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually fork a while loop into a background process. And the reason that I'm doing this is because all of these BSPC subscribe calls are very, very blocking. So they will keep running until BSPWM basically stops running. So what you need to do is make sure they get forked into the background because otherwise it's what it's going to do is basically just hit this first loop, uh, wherever it is, hit this first loop right here and then do nothing else. So you have to make sure each of the loops actually gets forked into the background. Otherwise, just the script is going to completely break. So I'll try to fix up those slight issues before you guys see this video. But overall, for most things, it works pretty well in this state. And it has been pinned on my GitHub for quite a while. So feel free to test it out. If you can come up with some extra behavior to add to it, maybe you can come up with a way to also support floating windows. Maybe you want to fix the sometimes not hiding a full screen thing. Whatever it is you want to do, feel free to submit a pull request. And if it is a good feature, I am more than happy to add it. So if you liked this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. I do have some more random BSPWM videos I do want to do, but that list is starting to get very short. So if you do have anything you want me to cover, feel free to let me know. But anyway... Down below, I've also got my social links, so that's my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates, then feel free to check any of those out. I've also got my support links down below, so that's my Patreon and various other links down there. So feel free to use any of those, but as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms, so that'll be my BitTube and my library. So feel free to use either of those if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. I don't really have a interesting thing to say at the end of this one, except the fact that I still can't apparently record a string of words without basically stumbling up upon everything, as you can probably see right now. I'm not going to cut that. Anyway, I think that's everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>